Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. If you know me, you know I love to talk about animals and I get to talk about animals all the time. But sometimes talking about animals can be kind of confusing because we give animals common names and they don't always match exactly what type of animal it is. Like for example, a jellyfish is not actually a type of fish. But luckily we also give animals scientific names that do a much better job helping us understand exactly what type of animal we're talking about. So we are gonna be spending a little bit of time exploring scientific names today. Let's jump in. As we mentioned, common names can be kind of confusing. We said before that jellyfish are not true fish. Starfish are also not true fish. They're invertebrates. They're not even closely related to fish. We've also got animals like prairie dogs, which of course are not dogs. They are squirrels. And the red panda is another really confusing one because we have the giant panda, who's a type of bear, and then we have the red panda, who is not related to bears. We actually think they're more closely related to skunks and weasels or raccoons. Because common names can be so confusing, scientists needed a better way to organize all these different plants and animals. So instead of common names, we often hear scientists using an organism's scientific name, which can also be called its binomial name or its Latin name. And no two organisms have the same scientific name, so there's a lot less confusion. And we can even learn things about the animal just by looking at its scientific name. We can maybe learn who its close relatives are or how it's classified in all of the animal kingdom. Most of the time when we're talking about animals, we're gonna be using their common names. When I talk about a lion, I usually just say lion. I usually don't say Panthera Leo, which is their scientific name. So common names are used more frequently in casual conversation, but it is important that we understand how to interpret a scientific name and how to write one. So let's start with how to interpret it. A species scientific name has two words. The first word is the genus, and the second word is the species name. Now I wanna go back to genus for a moment because animals that are really closely related, they're often in the same genus. So we might see two closely related animals having the same first word of their scientific name. And that tells us that those two species are very closely related. So our first word is the genus. Our second word is the species. Now, when writing a scientific name, all parts of the name are written in italics. And the first word, our genus, is capitalized. Our species name is lowercase, it's not capitalized. So let's think of a tiger, which is a species of big cat. If I'm writing about a tiger, I'm gonna write Panthera tigris. I'm gonna capitalize the P of Panthera, and I'm gonna write the entire scientific name in italics. Now, if I'm talking about a subspecies, which is an even smaller group of organisms, there's actually gonna be three words in the scientific name. We're gonna start with our genus, our second word is gonna be the species name, and our third word is going to be the subspecies name. So, I'm gonna think now of a Sumatran tiger, a subspecies of tiger. I would write that Panthera tigris, Sumatra. I'm going to capitalize the P in Panthera and I'm going to write the entire scientific name in italics. All right, so now we've got the foundation for how to write a scientific name. But I will say sometimes these scientific names can get really long. Some of them are really hard to pronounce and spell. So scientists have actually developed a way to abbreviate scientific names, to write them almost as shorthand. So we're gonna go back to our tiger and we're gonna talk about how we would write this if we wanted to write it as an abbreviation. We said their scientific name was Panthera tigris. If I wanna write it shorthand, I'm going to write the genus initial with a period and then the entire species name. So I would write P dot T. 
Tigris. I'm going to capitalize the P just like before and I'm still going to write the entire name in italics. Now, if we're talking about a subspecies, let's go back to our Sumatran tiger. It's very similar, but this time we are going to add the initial for the species name and spell out the entire subspecies name. So for Sumatran tigers, I would write capital P dot lowercase t dot Sumatra. And that's how I would write the subspecies Sumatran tiger in shorthand. All right, we're gonna take this one step further. Some of you may have noticed earlier when I was talking about the lion, I said their scientific name was Panthera leo. And the tiger scientific name is Panthera tigris. They share a genus, which means they're closely related like we talked about. And if I wanted to talk about the entire Panthera genus, I could write that as an abbreviation instead of writing out every single species in that genus. So if I wanted to talk about the entire Panthera genus, I would write Panthera and then I would write SSP, period. Panthera is still in italics because it's the scientific name. SSP is not in italics. And all that means is we are talking about more than one species in that genus. If I happen to be talking about a genus that only has one species, remember we said the red panda before is not part of the bear family. They don't actually have any very close relatives. They're the only species in their genus. So when I'm writing about a red panda genus in shorthand, I would write Ilurus, which is their genus, and then I would write SP, period. SSP is used when there's many species, and SP is used when there's only one species. Scientific names, while they may seem a little confusing, the whole point of a scientific name is to make things less confusing for scientists. So we covered a lot today. We covered how to interpret and how to write a complete scientific name for both a species and a subspecies. We talked about how to write those scientific names as abbreviations. And we also talked about how to abbreviate it when we're talking about the entire genus of an animal. So scientific names, I know they can be a lot to take in, but once you get the hang of it, it'll be no problem. All right, you guys, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me today while we learned all about scientific names. I hope this was very helpful for you. If you want to test and practice writing your scientific names, be sure to check out our Educating Adventures website. The link is below. Hit that like subscribe button and we will see you guys next time. Thank you.